Hello and welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. Today we're going to be doing another board game unboxing. And this is going to be of Merv, The Heart of the Silk Road. It's a game we picked up um, right around Christmas time. And they're just getting around to opening it up now. Um, it's a game by Fabio Lopiani. He's done a few other games. Um, a couple of notoriety. I just can't remember them offhand. Um, and Ian O'Toole. Ian O'Toole, you'll probably recognize. He's one of the premier uh, graphic designers um, of board games. He does a, an excellent job. Um, he, he did a retool of Clinic. I think he did um, Nemo's War, I believe, the second edition. And um, quite a few others um, with great, great artwork. Um, as you'll see, this game has great artwork in it. Um, and it's a game that's been on the radar for a while. It does have a solo mode to it. It's by uh, Osprey Games. Without further ado, um, let's get to the uh, unboxing. Happy New Year to all. Oops. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. Sorry, I apologize for the light there. It's, uh, I'm at a coffee shop, and uh, this is the best place I can get to record videos right now, but so it'll be a little bit of uh, glare in it but not too much i don't think it's too bad anyway um so merv the heart of the silk road merv was a city um way back uh, as you, you'll see um that was invaded several times it was a trading city great trading city that was invaded by the mongols and in this game they're gonna, you're going to have invasions by the mongols but Anyway, um, the gateway between the East and the West, the hub of scholarship and trade, the greatest city in the world. In Merv, the heart of the Silk Road, players are vying to amass power and wealth in a prosperous city at the center of the world. Through careful court intrigue, timely donations to the Grand Mosque, and securing favorable trade deals, players attempt to redirect as much of that prosperity as possible into their own pockets. Meanwhile, beyond the city walls, Mongol, Mongol hordes approach. In fact, the whole city was destroyed um, and no longer exists. If you help construct the city walls, you give up on precious opportunities to build up your own stature, but leave it unprotected, and you will burn with the city. Every decision is weighty, and the consequences of each misstep are dire. Will you rise to the prominence or fade into oblivion? All right, as you can see the uh, and you can see the price on it. It says sixty-five dollars. I did not pay sixty-five dollars for this. Uh, I paid significantly less than I think maybe around forty. I think it was, um, including the shipping, which was free. Uh, I think I got it from um, Game Nerds, I believe. Anyway, oh no, actually I didn't get it from Game Nerds. I think I got it from I think I got it on eBay. That's right, I did get it on eBay. All right, so it's historical engine building in a Euro game three of my favorite things um so it's got a board 25 tiles 48 cards 205 wooden pieces so wooden pieces so very good components as you'll see and 110 tokens so without further ado let's open it up and see what is inside of the box and it's not as thick as i thought it would be i thought it would be a thicker game just because i don't know i just did <laughs> it's very thin as you can see um, in comparison to a lot of board games. So that was it. That came right off. Um, but yeah, great artwork. That's one, definitely one of the th things that sold me on this game was the, was the great artwork in it. Of course, the gameplay too. So let's see here. Let's voila there. Make sure I can, everybody can see. Okay. All right. I have had, been having a little bit issue with my camera, so I just wanted to make sure that it was okay. Um, all right, so... Start with the rule book here, and the rule book is how uh, many pages we got here? 18, well, 20 pages, including the back there, so not too bad. Um, I like the back here already, definitely gives you an overview of the action phase of the year in overview. Um, the different iconography shows you the, what the iconography is, the different actions you can take. Basically, the six actions in the game. In the invasion and scoring phase, so pretty much, pretty. I like to see backs of uh, board games with stuff like this. It's a quick reference guide. You can just 
look at the back of the uh, manual. So very good, um, very good. Okay, so let's see here. Components, game components here. Your markers, 20 walls, gates, camels, buildings, discs, uh, resource cubes, master meeples, servant meeples. And then break down all the cards there. Caravan cards, contract cards, solo cards. So there is a solo mode to this, which, of course, uh, is something that I like. It's a little bit involved solo mode, and even the two-player can be a little bit involved too, because I think you play with a dummy player in both. Um, the solo mode, I think you play with two dummy players. One of them scores, and one of them just kind of gets in the way. Um, but anyway, we'll see that in a minute. So there's a very nice board here, as you'll see. Um, so the city is going to be in right here, and basically it's a 5x5 five five city. And it's going to be, it varies, so tiles are going to be placed randomly in here, so... Every game will be different. You have like a temple track there. You have a trading track here, trading route with rare goods and common goods. I think you have some kind of influence, yeah, influence track up top. And that influence will determine what kind of goods you can get, um, how many different types of goods you can get. And down here, uh, you have a palace track. Um, so it's influence will get you ability to place stuff in here in the palace track. I believe that's how it works. And then 10 is a favor track. And then this is a temple right here. A mosque, sorry, the mosque. So you're going to go up in the mosque and unlock different rewards. Um, so yeah, so a lot of good, a lot of good crunchy stuff in here, crunchy Euro stuff. Um, each tile is going to be something like this. It's going to have uh, a certain, uh, like I said, this, that choreography is very good. Like this, this is the same as the uh, temple track here. A power is the palace track and different, um, to be the library, which is look like a scroll, which does also have a library icon on it. And then this one right here is the trading one, and then the mosque one. So very good icon and the camel track there too, of course. Um, so yep, so all the different stuff in the game. And then here is kind of a game set up here. So all the different tiles in there, the camel track on the right there, and then all the different cubes and everything, and uh, the contracts you can fulfill. So very, very good. And then the bottom there is some kind of a favor thing, I think. The scrolls in the library there, which you can get. All right. And then uh, player pieces, cities. Yep. So this is the introduction. Historical note, a little bit on the history there. So that's kind of neat. 12th century AD. Yeah, the game is set during the 12th century, so in the 1100s AD. And then here, how to play. Action phase, turns, round end, manipulating turn order, invasion phase. So very looks like it's very well laid out rule book. Scoring phase, the different actions you can take. Gain favor, deploy a soldier, caravan, Surrey. Uh, I play examples here, different areas you can go to. And yeah, it looks like it's well broken down. Palace, library. Example play, that's good, always good. Marketplace and mosque, so those are the, and the wall, those are the areas you can go into. So, yep, so you're going to want to build walls around the city, and depending upon where you build the walls, you can protect your buildings, um, or you can help actually protect uh, an opponent's buildings, and by doing that, you'll get more influence and everything, too. You'll get more uh, on that track up top there, um, which will unlock different things um, but you'll definitely so while your buildings won't be protected if you protect others well you have a choice basically like i said you can either help others or help yourself but helping others can get you um, good benefits too but it'll also protect the buildings and then the game end and you have two player the high courtier that's what you're gonna you're gonna uh have in the game and then the solo version you're going to have the high courtier and the corrupt magistrate um again one of only one of them scores but it's got a really cool mechanism of scoring um of uh determining who goes first in the round and that kind of stuff um camels are involved in that and so here's the so i think this is the whole solo mode and i think there's a deck of cards for the um for the uh solo mode too Marketplace library, so it shows how each operates and how the uh, the different uh, things that the uh, the solo 
um, guy will do the AI. Yeah, and then here's the wall. So it basically breaks down um, how much influence you get. Like if you do two of the, this is in the solo mode, so I won't go through all that, but there's different ways of determining um, uh, the influence that the high courtier will get or you'll get kind of thing. And credits there and everything too. So anyway, so very good um, rule book there. And then here we go. So you get some punch outs here. Not the thickest components I've seen. Definitely not. <laughs> um, but okay, I guess. It's, it's okay. I mean, I think they're good enough quality. Um, but yeah, definitely could have been thicker, I think. But anyway. Okay. Moving right along, the next one is kind of a similar thing. More of the tiles for the um, center there. Scrolls, contracts, and different things. Uh, it looks like these are the different goods you can get, maybe. Or items you can sell and trade, that kind of stuff. And so just two of those, that's it, just two of those. And then you get your big, big game board. Uh, get to that last, probably. But that, that seems to be good quality and the different some items in here there's all your stuff so these are the walls these are the yellow walls it looks like so these are the walls you're going to build around the city and the different player tokens looks like you have black and some of the goods tokens these are cool i think these go in the these are like the double walls here kind of thing that go in the center maybe uh, yeah so these are good quality it seems if these are I think these are wood. Yeah, these are wood. So good quality there. Uh, let's see here. And then your meeples. You have your blue meeples. Looks like these are trading houses. So it must be black. One of the colors. Light blue. Looks like yellow. And you can see it's, it's some different goods. And each good um, is a different color. I'm not sure exactly what good is or what color. In a euro, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> red, looks like red. So black, blue, red, and yeah. Black, blue, red, and yellow. Yep. So no green. And here are the camels. These are cool. These are what you're going to be used to determine turn order and um, different things. And you, um, you can buy. They'll unlock different benefits and stuff too. So these are little camels. These are pretty cool. Uh, looks like red, more red meatballs. Your yellow, tr I mean, your trading houses. So if you're familiar with any games like Amerigo and other things, is trading houses. Your Monopoly, actually, for that matter, but these are wooden. Uh, and these are, I think these are your big ones. I think these are used in the solo game, I want to say, because they're a little bit bigger. No, actually, these are the regular ones. These are the uh, ones you're going to be moving around the track, which I'll show you when we get to the game board. Um, yeah, these are the ones that stay on the game board, I believe. And then, yeah, blue, like blue trading houses, and black meatballs, and yellow meatballs, and yeah, so standard, standard fare. Nothing, uh, nothing that exciting, different, more goods. All right, so just a little bit of cards. So these are your camel cards, as well as, I think, your contracts that you can fulfill. So we'll open up that. Might as well. Oh, that came off pretty easily. Oh, I'll stay that now. So therefore, we do have some sleeves for these, which is good. These are pretty thin. But, okay. So these are different contracts you're going to fulfill. The, the, uh, oh, sorry, camel cards you can get. Um, and they give you different benefits, and I think it's a set collection thing, I believe, is what it is. Different spices and everything. Yeah, so these are different spices. It looks like these are cinnamon, maybe cinnamon, possibly. Just a guess. And then these are oh, ginseng or something like that, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what my spices are. I'm not the greatest at my spices, but at the spices. <laughs> Uh, looks like some kind of berry. Yep, and I guess, I, and then another one right here. I know I should know this one, but I can't think of it. 
It's basically a game about trading, <laughs> trading in the Middle East. <laughs> Uh, no, there's a lot more to it than that. And then these are the contracts that you can fulfill, which I think you put the goods on here. Um, I, I believe they're locked in for the end of the game. And they give you a certain amount of victory points and some other benefits. I think victory points is this right here, I believe. One of these is victory points. It's either that one or that one. One of them is possible. I'm guessing it's this one because it varies. I think this is just a benefit you can get from doing that. One of the action area so yep so simple contracts well fairly simple i guess different levels of contracts i believe we have more victory points yeah these got to be the higher level ones and there you go i think they unlock different things too give you actions possibly yeah so these are different contracts here yeah these are levels so one two and three that's it and oh ah this is awesome Lots of baggies here. Good stuff. I love this when they include these right here. Looks like decent quality bags, too. Hopefully, they'll be the right size. Not too big and not too small. And then a little small one in here. And what do we got here? This must be the solo. Oh, this might be a... Oh, these are the uh, helper cards here. Priority. I think these are the solo cards. Yeah, it determines what the AI does. Yeah, this might be... This is probably the solo deck. Not the helper cards there. Yeah, this looks like it might be a solo AI thing. Yeah, what the yeah priority? What the AI does in different situations. So it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six cards. So not too complicated of an AI, I don't think. Yeah. Move this card from the game here. Yeah. yeah, so it looks like it's fairly easy to. I know it's a little bit more involved than I usually like it, but I think it's a good. It's a good solo. I watched Ricky Royale and do one, and I'm trying to think. I don't know if John Gets Games did one, possibly. Or Slicker Drips. One of those guys uh, did another one, but I know Ricky Royale did a really good one. Royale did it, so check out his playthrough. It's probably the one I like the most. But... Yep, so it's different things depending upon game situations and whatever, too, for the solo AI. All right. And now the game board. The game board, which is beautiful. And I think it's only one-sided, I want to say. Yep. So it's just black on one side. And I will set it up, and hopefully the camera will... Let's see, which way does it go? This way. Oh, yeah. Beautiful game board, though, man. Beautiful. It's beautiful. The artwork is amazing. It's a pretty big game board, too. Definitely a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Considering the size of the box and everything, so let's see if I can show you. I'm not going to lift it up because I think my cord might be having issues with it, so I don't want to lock it up and freeze this. But beautiful game board, definitely. Eno Two did an awesome job on this. Again, one of my favorite um, graphic artists for board games, definitely. But, yep, so that's it right there. That is your game board. And that's, again, this is going to vary. And that's, you can get camels and do other trading stuff in there. Yeah, go up the temple track. Lots of tracks. All the uh, walls go up there and have different costs. So, definitely a cool, cool game. Um, and this is one, definitely, that the graphic art definitely sold me on this one. Um, as well as the gameplay. It's got really good gameplay from what I've seen. Anyway, that is Merv, Heart of the Silk Road, and this has been another board game unboxing from High Ground Gaming. So stay tuned for our next one, and take care and God bless, and hopefully we'll, like I said, I know I've been talking about it probably for a couple years now, but I do want to definitely uh, start some board game playthroughs, and I think this uh, here, where I'm, where I'm at here, is a good place to do them at, as well as... Uh, um, a friend's house too but i think this might be a good place to start doing some um other than the lighting we'll have to work with the lighting issue potentially um and they're unfortunately not open in the evening they're only open until five but anyway uh this room seems to be always open so i did do some have some board game stuff going on um here before covid um on saturday afternoons and i kind of like to start that up again you maybe saturday afternoon once again um for Today being Friday, Friday afternoon might even work too for some people. We'll see what people 
um, are up for. So take care and God bless, and we'll see you in the next board game unboxing. Bye-bye now.